Hey fans and subscribers, this is your host Joe on the Gaming for Insight channel. And in this video, I am going to be showing you a profile that I created for Starfield, a long awaited game on the ANEO 2S. And this profile is within Aespace 2 beta. And also in addition to looking at the profile, I will show the in-game settings that I am using with the profile and then show some gameplay where you can see across three distinct areas how these settings work. So let me first start with showing you within Aespace 2 Beta the profile that I have created. We are in performance within settings and I have labeled this profile Starfield conveniently. Let me start with the FPS limit. I have this set at 40. Setting the frame limit at 40 is going to create a smooth experience across three distinct areas that you will see in the game with various performance demands. And that means that our frame rates stay between the 30 and 40 range. Our TDP limit is going to be set at smart. This is a feature within Aespace 2 beta and it allows for the wattage drawn by the APU to change as needed to maintain that FPS limit. Our power policy is going to be set at high and this is going to accommodate the TDP limit, the smart function to allow for the wattage necessary and that is needed for the FPS limit to be at 40. Our fan configuration is going to be set at hardware control. This means that the preset fan curve within the BIOS is going to be active in this case. The CPU clock speed is going to be set at auto. This allows for the clock speed to vary and is not locked in depending on where we are in the game. However, what you can expect to see in the gameplay is that the clock speed is going to be slightly below what is the base clock for the Ryzen 7 7840U and that base clock is 3.3 gigahertz and actually you're going to see anywhere from 2700 megahertz to 3200 megahertz in the three areas that we are going through in the game the three distinct areas that i mentioned before the gpu clock speed is going to be set at auto you are going to see in the gameplay that 1800 megahertz is where the clock speed likes to stay and this is actually slightly above the base clock speed for the 780M, part of the Ryzen 7 7840U APU, 1800 megahertz is 300 megahertz higher than the end range of the base clock speed, which is 1.5 gigahertz or 1500 megahertz. So between 1200 and 1500 megahertz is the base clock range for the 780M. So slightly above that. Our CPU turbo is going to be disabled. Now to use the smart TDP feature, a part of Aespace 2 beta, the CPU turbo is not going to be able to be enabled when using that feature. So we have covered the settings that are set within the Aespace 2 profile. Now what I want to do is transition to the in-game settings that we are going to set in alignment with this profile. All right, I have the menu open within Starfield. I am going to go to settings and I am going to go to display. And here are the settings that I have set to align with the profile I have designed in Aespace 2. Instead of going through each of these settings one by one, let me at least highlight the important ones that I want to align with this profile. We are using the 1920 by 1200 P resolution. This is set by preference, but since on the ANEO 2S, we are working with a 1200 P display. I am selecting that resolution to use. And for our dynamic resolution, I have that enabled. I have that set it on and it is going to align with working with the FSR2 setting, Fidelity FX Super Resolution 2, an AMD technology for generating frames. Our render resolution side is going to be at 50%. This is going to align with that setting equivalent to performance or ultra performance so the frames generated are going to be at 50 percent of what is the native resolution 
The settings for display, these main ones, are graphics preset. I just set that at low and shadow quality, indirect lighting, reflections. These are going to be set at low with the graphics preset set at low. I do have motion blur set it off. That is going to be preferential. So base that on what you prefer. Our V-Sync is going to be enabled. This is going to create a smooth gameplay experience, especially since we are working on a 60 hertz display and we are targeting a frame limit of 40 instead of higher than 60, for example. And our variable rate shading or VRS is going to be enabled for this one. Now in my video, I last posted on the Asus ROG Ally. I do go into detail about VRS. That is going to be a preferential setting. So set that to what you prefer. Our film grain intensity is going to be one and our depth of field is going to be on. Next, our sharpening is going to be at 0%. Now, this is going to be preferential as well. So with the frames generated, you may want those sharpened and that is what is going to give opportunity for that crisper image. So now that we have covered the in-game settings, I'm going to switch perspective and show you gameplay on the overall ANEO 2S myself instead of just looking at the in-game display here. All right, and I have open on my ANEO 2S, the game Starfield, and I'm going to show you some gameplay with this profile designed in AS Space 2 beta along with the in-game settings that we just went through. I'm going to take you through three different zones that I have identified through my last two videos, the one on the Steam Deck and the one on the Asus ROG Ally. And with this profile, I have designed an AS Space 2 beta. We are going to see consistency with the frame rate staying between 30 and 40 frames and we are going to see consistency with the clock speeds as well and we are going to see consistency with the tdp we're going to see anywhere from 24 to 28 watts drawn from the apu based on the smart tdp that is enabled so this zone is Ebside, and it is an example of what I consider to be the high performance demand zone like New Atlantis. And this is where the demand is high for performance and frame rates can easily drop into the teens. Now with the smart TDP function, we see that 27 and 28 watts is what we are requiring to keep our frame rate close to 40. So walking around here, you see that our GPU frequency is going to is sitting around. It looks like it goes from 2600 to 3200 megahertz. And this is what is expected based on previous testing that I have done. And in the gameplay I'm showing you now, this is consistent. Our GPU frequency is 1800 megahertz. This is in alignment with what I've seen in my testing with this profile. So you get to see that here. And what you are going to see is this frame rate experience is going to align with the other two zones that I am going to show you. However, there is going to be a slight difference in the wattage that is drawn by the APU. Let me now transition to our second area that we are going to look at. This is going to be the second distinct area and in my last videos i categorized it as a hybrid area and this is where there can be a mixed performance demand and we see some fluctuations in frame rate where in certain areas the frame rate is lower in other areas it is higher but with this profile we are going to see smoothness and consistency staying between 30 and 40 frames so this is the neon tower here so we're just going to walk around. You're going to see the consistency in frame rate. And you see that the wattage being drawn by the APU, it dropped down to 26, whereas before it was 27, 28. So this is a less demanding area. We just saw it drop to 25. And this is to be expected. This is consistent with the data from the test that I have done. 
And this is great that there is a smart TDP feature that allows for the adjustment of the wattage drawn by the APU. And depending on what we are doing and where we are, it works really nicely for this game because of the varying zones that demand more or less performance for a certain frame rate. And we are seeing in this area for our GPU frequency, we are a little below what is considered base clock at 3200 megahertz. And there are some occasional drops. And we're also seeing for our GPU frequency, 1800 megahertz. Now I have seen in my previous testing that this can drop to even 1500 megahertz, but this second distinct area is less demanding for performance than Ebside, the first area that we saw within the, or around the Neon Tower area. So now let me show you the third type of area, and these are inside areas. This is where there is less of a demand for performance. And we're just going inside one of these shop-like areas here. And you can immediately tell that it is, it is easier to stay at 40 than it was in the other two areas. We are still seeing in this area that our clock speed on the CPU component of the APU is staying in the 3200s and it does drop occasionally. And we're seeing that our GPU frequency is staying at 1600 megahertz in this area. In the higher demanding area, it was 1800 megahertz. And that is going to be our video on the smart TDP feature used in playing Starfield on the ANEO 2S or any ANEO device that you have AS Space 2 beta installed on. This is just meant to be a short video just to show you a profile that you can use to play this game on your ANEO device that has AS Space 2 beta. Let me know in the comments what settings are you using? Are you using the smart TDP feature? And if so, how are you enjoying it? Are you targeting this same frame rate? Let me know in the comments as I am interested to read what you have to say. Now, with that, let me leave you now with the words of Commander Shepard from Mass Effect. I should go.